Hello everyone. This is the last video that you are required to uh, kind of look at. Hopefully you are looking at the questions at the same time as we do this video. I will keep it as short as possible. This is more of a quick recap and then a goodbye. So for obviously Friday ends our, tomorrow ends our new material. And then the last two weeks of school are for fun stuff and to get organized. So I'm going to recap the civil end of the Civil War real fast, give a brief um, introduction and reconstruction, and then explain the last two weeks. So let's just get after it. Um, the results of the Civil War, hopefully you have tried to understand this the best that you can, even if you got confused by battles and things like that. The results of the Civil War are so significant because our nation could have truly been in two. Now, people argue today that we're still in two, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. But this sets a, ends the slavery debate in theory. Legal slavery is abolished. It is now gone. The federal government is absolute. You can't just argue with the national government anymore like a lot of states had. Now, we still do have arguments, but nothing to the extent of what brought us to the Civil War. The U.S. does stay together, but like I said, are we really together? And then, of course, we can't forget about the thousands of lives lost, the destruction, just the, the mental well-being of the country at this time. So there's a lot of issues, and that leads us to Reconstruction. Um, this is one of the most important parts of American history. Um, and we just didn't get to it because of well the virus and everything. So once the war is done, things don't just go, yay, we're happy, we're going back to normal. We have to bring the country back together and it just doesn't happen overnight. Reconstruction takes 12 years. For 12 years, the South is still under control of the North. Okay, I am going to actually do a reconstruction video for next week. I just, I'm trying to catch up. It just, it's tough to get all this stuff recorded and done digitally. Um, so you won't be required to watch it, but it will be helpful. I think there's a lot of things that you missed out on because of just virus related missing school. Uh, some of the things within reconstruction, the North controls the South militarily. We have soldiers and military generals controlling the States until they do what we want to be accepted back into the United States. We passed the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, which abolished slavery for the 13th, and it cannot be taken away. You cannot get rid of the 13th Amendment. In this country, as long as we exist with the Constitution, we can never have slavery. The 14th Amendment, granting citizenship to any person born in the United States. And this is the big debate today about should we just have anybody that's born be a citizen, whether they're learning what our history is, whether they're following the rules, whether they come into the country. This is the big immigration debate. Um, is it just because you're born in this country that you should get all the rights? These are things you're going to have to deal with. The 15th Amendment does grant voting rights to male, um, black males, not women. We still haven't given any female the right to vote in history. And this is a, these are significant, significant amendments, um, but they just start the process. And you, you will hopefully hit them again in the future. A couple other things. Yeah, the assassination, the murder of Abraham Lincoln by John Wilkes Booth. And I'll talk about that more in the other video. Uh, we have to rebuild the South. We have to rebuild their mind and their physical land, houses, farms, actually uh, railroads, telegraph lines. We have to help them. You don't just, if you want to have a good relationship, you don't punch somebody and then walk away and go, ha -ha. You, you help them up. You work it out. You go through the argument. And then we can't talk about reconstruction with the fact that the South fought it every step of the way. And we could argue that we're still having these steps and we'll see this in the next slide. Many in the South do not accept. They kind of go, yeah, we agree with the United States now, but they do everything they can to go against laws with organized racism, Jim Crow laws with, oh, okay, black men can vote. Now there's a poll tax. So you need to pay to vote. Could a lot of freed slaves pay to vote? 
No. So it was a way of getting around the rules and national rules to allow states to still restrict the rights of people, especially blacks. Um, and then we have hate terrorist groups like the Ku Klux Klan. Um, the, the white masks over, like I said, the other video is going to be much better, but organizations that go to murder and harass African-Americans. And if you're going, oh, I don't need to worry about this stuff. It doesn't exist anymore. Two weeks ago, there was a guy who went into a grocery store in San Diego, California, and his coronavirus mask was a KKK mask. We still have this racism. If you think we don't, as you get older, your eyes will hopefully be open to the fact that we have a lot of hate that we need to figure out a way to get over. Speaking of that, are we still reconstructing the day? Many scholars argue yes, because still in 2020, we have examples of what is called institutionalized racism. And what that is, is when society or the government creates situations where things are unequal. Some examples, and some could argue, but some we have unfair housing acts uh, where African Americans, especially, are not given opportunities to get in certain areas. Voting restrictions. We've seen how um, other states, even in the last election, took away voting rights of certain minority groups in society. The prison pipeline of uh, arresting young blacks and having them be in prison at such a young age compared to whites. There are statistics that show that that's very accurate. Police violence. Now, this is not an anti-police statement, but we can even look at some examples today of where we see uh, there was uh, videos on the same day in New York when they reopened the uh, parks. Um, there were police officers breaking up groups of blacks in one park. In one park, it was predominantly white people in a more upper class area. No police to be found, nobody breaking anything up. These are just things we need to think about. It doesn't make it that it's the same for everybody across the board, but we need to open our eyes to all the problems we do have because we have to start fixing them. White privilege, we kind of talked about that when we talked about like male privilege with uh, the women's rights movement. Uh, I encourage you to look up the Ahmed Arbery example, the case where this young black man was jogging through his neighborhood, just jogging, no weapon on him jogging and was gunned down by two white men. We have examples of this today. And then of course I put the Confederate flag up there. Um, there are people that go, Confederate flag, it's all about the Southern way of life. That is a symbol of racism. And even if you go, no, it's not, the vast majority of society considers that a symbol of racism. So you may not, but that symbol was all about freedom to have slavery, not just the Southern way of life, but that Southern way of life was slavery. So, I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many other issues and this is not somebody's right and somebody's wrong all the time. It's things that we need to talk about if we're going to move forward as a country, if we're gonna mature and treat people equal. If we're unwilling to talk about these and look at both sides and meet in the middle, we're never gonna get any better. So enough of the history. What do you have the last two weeks? Priority number one is to make up work. Remember, it's not, the district just said, it's not about your letter grade. You could have a D, but if you're missing a big chunk of assignments, I, I have to fail you for the fourth quarter. So make sure that you're catching up on work. If you don't get this, this quiz done by tomorrow, whatever, it's not the end of the universe. Take the weekend off, enjoy Memorial Day, whether you're seeing family, bigger groups, whatever, however it works for you and your family under this coronavirus. But then try to get things done like by Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. If you're missing a huge amount of work, as it says on Tuesday, I will email parents and students. So you need to still be checking your email, okay? Um, well, we can work on priorities. I can call people. I can Zoom with people to make sure that you understand exactly what your responsibilities are. If you have work to make up, I would like you to have it by next Friday. 
because then I can sit there next Friday, catch up on everything and go, okay, this kid's in much better shape. Uh, this kid, I, I have a couple students who have done two out of about 22 assignments this quarter. So obviously I have to call the last week of school and figure out whether we're gonna do a remediation plan. Uh, we're hoping nobody fits in that, but I'm just trying to lay this out. This slide doesn't apply to a lot of you because many of you have been doing your work to the best of your ability. So if you're in that case, you would kind of skip right to the end of the year activity. Um, I'm making these things available, I'm trying to make it very clear. You're not required to do any of these. Uh, and I'm not trying to twist your arm to get you to do them. I just hope that you at least look over them and uh, I'm hoping that I get people to do some of them, but it's totally up to you. So um, the end of the year activities, hopefully I will be able to post them next Tuesday. I don't wanna post them this week because then people are gonna get them mixed up with what's required. So that's why I'm please asking you, and you should do it in every class, log into Google Classroom next week, check your email at least, and you know you'll get a student update email from me. Look at what's available. Look at what I'm sharing, whether you care about it or not. Take a look at it for 10 minutes. It's not gonna hurt anybody. So that'll be posted at the latest by Wednesday of next week. So like I said, please check your email and check PowerSchool if you're worried about your grade in any way, shape or form. So some of the things that you'll have available the last two weeks. Um, I am making the SLO test available for people to take as a final to determine if they grew per like the state standards kind of material. Am I expecting a lot of people to want to take it? No, but I want to make it available to you because some of you want this challenge. So as it says, if you would like this, please email me. I, I, I Since I'm sending this out today, if it's not tomorrow, it's not the end of the world, but definitely by like Sunday. Yeah, Mr. Matheson, I do want to take the challenge. I want to see if I really remembered a lot of this stuff and grew from my percentages at the beginning of the year in the middle. Just please let me know because if nobody wants to do it, then I'm not going to go through the process of posting it online and everything like that. Um, if you take it, I'll send you your score from the beginning of the year and the midterm and the final so that you can see your progress. Uh, if you don't, it's not the end of the world. Everything is totally different this year. Uh, I did put at the bottom, if you're like, yeah, I want to take it, and then you cheat and look up every answer, it's a waste of time. Um, if you really want the challenge, and you are like, I want to see how I grew with the history facts, I'm just, just a test, okay? A lot of you grew in so many other ways. But if, I mean, if you cheat, there was no point in doing it. So, I mean, I'm not going to know either way, but the number is what the number is. I'm going to assume that if you're taking it, you are really trying, because if you're volunteering to take your time to take this SLO, that means you really are interested in seeing your growth. Totally up to you, but please email me, hey, Mr. Madison, I want to take the SLO, so I know who to send it to, so I know just what I need to do, and I'll work it out with those students. I won't bug everybody else. Another thing that you'll be able to do is an evaluation of me. Every single year that I've been a teacher and I have them in the classroom, I actually showed them to you the first day, even though I doubt you remember that, is I have students evaluate me. It's going to be different this year because I'm going to have to transfer everything to a Google form and have you type it out. And it, I, I don't know, I might do a Google, um, like just a Google Doc and have you type answers in between. That might be easier for me but I'm gonna share that with you. Um, unfortunately, the last few years, I've had less and less students do it. Uh, the only way for me to get better is to have you give me legit feedback. Um, the focus of the feedback is gonna be from the first three quarters, but then I am gonna add some different questions that focus just on the fourth quarter. And um, I mean, this whole digital process has been new for everybody. I'm sure that there's some things that they could be better at. And if we come back next year and it's digital, I'm sure it's gonna be a totally different way. We're gonna to have to keep grades like for real in so many different scenarios. Um, probably gonna require more time, I don't know. Nobody knows right now. Um, but with this evaluation, you'll have that option. Google form or it'll be a Google doc, whatever I send out, you just roll with it if you want to. And then I usually do send out uh, evaluation for parents to complete as well. So if your parents are seeing this, they will get an email with the evaluation to I hope that, I want you to be honest if you do this. Um, don't be like mean. Um, I, I Actually, now that I think about it, it will be a Google form that way. 
um, your name isn't on it because <laughs> I don't want, I want you to be able to be uh, honest with things. And if you think something didn't work, then tell me a good workaround. If something did work, tell me so I can do more of it. But I really look forward to this. Almost done. I know it's taken a while. Just bear with me. Some of the other things uh, since I started, I've always done a guide to Midview High School. These are suggestions given by me, other teachers at the high school, and past students to help you get to that point of feeling comfortable for next year. Um, I'll have longer videos that I will post on each of these just to be supportive. Hopefully you look at them, but if you don't, I mean, obviously it's not the end of the universe. You're not going to get hurt grade-wise or anything like that, but um, it's for your benefit. Um, you do, you'll also get this, a favorite of mine about leadership and some quotes that I think are very important. We didn't do as much with quotes this year as I would like, um, but this will all be shared with you so that you have it. And I know a lot of kids hold on to this and the um, guide to Midview High School. A um, couple of fun things that will come out. Uh, just been waiting on some good weather to do the dance video, my formal. Um, there will be a final lesson video, um, the lesson that I always do the last the 10 minutes of the last day, and a bye video that um, could be pretty interesting. Um, with that in mind, last couple of things. This is one thing I'm hoping that you do. Uh, normally, I do a class picture where we all come, go up in front of class, we take a picture smiling, the next day I have it printed out and you get to sign around the outside. Obviously, we cannot do that. So what I'm asking, if you're willing, I know I'm gonna probably not get very many people to do this, but it's totally up to you, is for you to take a picture of yourself, okay? Now, obviously have it be more of a head kind of upper body shot because I'm gonna have to shrink all these to put them on like a PowerPoint slide to print out and I'll have as much of the class as I can on the wall behind me next year. Um, if you don't send one, you're fine, but it would be awesome if you took a picture. If you wanna do a Snapchat filter or you wanna, dress up a certain way and be just let your personality show that's fine i'm hoping that i get a lot of you to do this but i also understand if you don't um but usually every kid enjoys participating in it enjoys seeing their picture and things like that well almost done last couple things i want to throw this on here um i'm going to share this as well um i put some visuals of some vi uh, movies from this year that i would strongly encourage you to watch at some point in your life a lot of these are a little bit longer because they're historical. Some of them are definitely R-rated with some things that you want to run past mom and dad first just to be on the safe side. But outstanding, outstanding movies. Um, all hitting important things. A lot with the Civil War, a lot with slavery. Um, Last of the Mohicans about the War of 1812 and the impact on American Indians. Uh, and there's probably so many more I could have come up with, but I think seven is good enough. Um, this is really important. Pickup day. We just, this is why I waited on this um, because our staff meeting was yesterday at one o'clock. Okay. And then I had Zooms. I just couldn't finish it up. So bear with me. Um, I will try to be there on May 29th, which is not this Friday, but actually that's two. Yeah. Next Friday. I'm sorry. Next Friday from nine till one in the morning, you will be able to come into the middle school, turn in your book. Please try to do that. Please try to do that. Pick up your portfolio. A lot of people did not pick up their portfolio. If you don't pick it up, I will probably take the resources and use them as examples. Okay, I'm not going to just leave them there. Um, if you can't get there that day, let me know. Let me know. We'll figure it out. It'll also be an opportunity to get the certificates from the virtual banquet because the banquet will be posted online at 9 a.m. per Mr. Brown and Mrs. Lawn. And we hope that you enjoy it. Later in the day, from four to six, you'll be able to come and pick up your yearbook. So this is a big day to finally turn things in. And I don't see a reason why I, I can't be there. I'll have my mask on and everything to just say any farewell, goodbyes, help out with anything. Um, but as you can see down at the bottom pictures, there's a lot of portfolios left. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. And then I will post a final lesson um, next week. Please do check Google Classroom at least once a week. Why not? It does, it's not going to hurt you. Get on, see if something that's posted in all of your classes, not just mine, in all of your classes, see if it's fun, see if it's interesting, see if it's something that might inspire you to be ready more for next year or just to have a fun summer. Um, if you don't look at any of the other stuff, which I do encourage, but okay, 
then I hope that you really had a fun year. I hope that you feel like you learned a lot and grew because I believe that all of you did. And I just want you to know that it was a pleasure working with you this year. So let me go ahead and stop sharing and just say thank you again. Um, please check things out. And guys, just have a great summer, the best that you can, and be ready to go for whatever it is next year. We're all in the same boat. We'll all get through it. Know that myself, the rest of the middle school teachers are always here for you. You can email anytime. You can contact anytime. It's been my pleasure. Have a good one, guys.